So here's the problem. There are 25 horses. What is the minimum number of races needed so you can identify the fastest three horses? You can race up to five horses at a time, but you do not have a watch. Interesting problem. So first thing I see when I read this question is that you, you need a minimum of five races because without racing every horse at least once, you don't know which one's the fastest. So every horse has to at least run one race. So we know that the minimum is five. So that's my starting point. Mm -hmm. Then you would also like, it's a good idea to consider all the points given. So like it says you don't have a watch, so you can only uh, compare five horses at a time. And since you race five at a, uh, you already race five, then like, uh, but all the five groups are like basically independent. So you have to race at least one once more to like identify the other, uh, like uh, how the groups are treated. But like you know the order, so like this is helpful afterward. So, should we go at it? We can start. Well, let's draw those twenty-five horses. Let's go ahead. Yeah. Uh, you wanna hold this? Yeah. I will go ahead. We have twenty-five horses. I'm just gonna use. Oh, oh boy. Ah. <laughs> uh, just use that one. Oh, that one's small. So, so we have. 25 horses? Oh boy! Does that work? Does it work? work? Yeah, it works. Okay. Oh, there we go. So we have 25 horses, and I'm gonna place them into five groups because each group has to race at least once. So right now they are in five groups, or which I'm gonna put them in rows, and each of them. And each group is going to race, race one. So this is going to be group one, group two, group three, group four, and group five. Now when we race, we're all going to, every race, we're going to have a winner. So let's just say that these were the winners of the five groups. You want to? And then um, you, since the, you know the orders of these horses, since these are the fastest in each, each race since like first like you race group one and then you know the order of these so you choose the fast horse and then you put it here and then you know these so you can arrange the five groups based on how fast uh the, their fastest horses and then uh the question asks to find the three fastest horses since like uh, uh you can name the a group with the fastest horse, like that's the fastest in all five, you just call it group one. So this has to be the fastest one. Uh, let's circle it. And then um, the second fastest can either be this or this. And then the third, since like uh, it can be here, like uh, since this is slower than that, and this is slower than that. So it can be this, or it can be this, or it can be this. Um, or, yeah. yeah, so the second and third have to be in this group of five. So you raise these five forces. And then, yeah, you can know the second and third. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what do you think about this? Damn, I mean, yeah, that's a very interesting problem. Yeah. Uh, I like this approach actually a lot because at first you look at it and then I thought about just brute forcing it. So, uh, <laughs> Just racing the five, getting the three, and then just racing another two. But obviously this isn't, I know that it's not the right answer, but that was my starting point, And I was just trying to optimize it as much as I could. But yeah, it's already, it's already up here. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty well done. Yeah, so this is just kind of like a walkthrough of how you would solve a math problem. So something to note is that at the start of every problem, it's okay to have like, different ideas, and not all your ideas on solving the problem is going to work. But what's important is to try all of them and to see which one does. And even if none of them work, keep keep thinking of new uh, ways to come up with a solution and keep trying them. Exactly. I want to add on that if you, even if you think you have an approach, but you don't think it's the most optimal, it's it's a lot better to just try it than to not do anything. Because if you, if you go from a start, it's still a start, it can get you somewhere. It's a lot better than just being there, just trying to think of the best solution uh, than to just try, just try something. So, yeah.
Yeah, but yeah, but I think that this problem was, uh, even though it's not a math problem, even though it's not a math problem, right? It's it's a logic problem, but it's still the same problem, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah, Ethan, if you want to come here, okay, let's all stand together. But yeah, I really want to thank all of you guys um, for for and the math club for doing this interview, and um, we wish you the best in the future. Yeah, yeah. yeah. thank you.